In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of pressure. Now, this is going to be the very beginning of a unit long conversation about gases and the properties of gases. So first, let's kind of set the stage of why are gases important and why should we care about them? Um, the truth is that very few species actually exist as gases naturally. So there's only really a few that under typical conditions will be gases, right? Um, but the few that are gases under typical conditions are very important, right? Think about the gases that are in the atmosphere, right? So like oxygen that, that we breathe, that keeps us alive. It exists as a gas under atmospheric conditions, right? Uh, the nitrogen is also in the atmosphere, um, a gas under atmospheric conditions. And the reactions of what we put into the atmosphere with these gases that are naturally there are the cause of pollutants and whatnot. Uh, also, gases are very important in industrial applications. So a lot of industrial reactions will be done in these huge reactors in the gas phase. So whether you're an environmentalist who cares about why the climate is changing or you're a budding chemical engineer who's thinking about you know, scaling up some big reaction for a company, um, it, it, there's a stake in understanding the properties of gases and being able to model them accurately. And one of the, the ways that we define a gas is by its pressure, right? There's a few key uh, properties of a gas that we use to define it. A few of them you're already very familiar with. The temperature is used to define a gas sample. The volume, the amount, specifically the number of moles, right? So a lot of the stoichiometry that we talked about in the last few units um, comes into play here, right? The amount of gas is necessary to, to define the gas sample. And the last one is pressure. And this is the one that we really need to introduce that you're, you may or may not be completely familiar with that kind of deserves its own uh, introduction. here. So what I've drawn here in this figure um, is just kind of to remind you uh, on a particle level what gases look like. We talked about this in a very passing way in the very beginning of the semester, uh, but gases on a particle level have the most freedom, right? We talked about how solids are very tightly packed together. Particles are barely moving. With liquids, they're more, a little bit less tightly packed together, have a little bit more uh, particle level freedom. Uh, but gases have the most freedom and their, their motion is very random. And so if you're thinking about a gas that's confined to this container, it is going to build up pressure in that container by the collision of the particles with the, the sides of the container. Right? So let's kind of zoom in on one of these interactions. Right? So let's say we have our container wall here, right? So we have our container wall. And let's say we have one of these gas particles coming in, right, from above here, right? It's going in this direction and it's gonna strike that container wall, right? So we know that the container wall has some sort of area, right? There's gonna be an area to define this container wall. And I'm gonna use the uh, uh, capital A to define the area. And this particle is going to come in with some type of force, right? So there's gonna be a force here that the particle is gonna have based on its you know, speed, its acceleration, right? And I'll use F to denote the force, right? So what we're saying here with this particle level model of, um, of this of this gas behavior is that these interactions, this striking of these gas particles against the container walls is going to build up pressure in the container. And this is the, the general physics definition of pressure. So if I use a capital P here for pressure, right? Pressure is going to be equal to the force exerted, right? Per unit area. Right, so force per unit area is the general definition of pressure, right? And we're really talking about how these particles are striking the container with a particular force uh, with a certain contact area for each of those gas particles, right? So that's going to be how pressure builds up in any container that contains a gas. Now, how can we measure the pressure of gases? So what I have in this figure here on the right uh, is one of the oldest ways to measure pressure of a gas. And this is a, a device called a manometer. And basically what a manometer is, is basically you evacuate some container 
and you trap a gas in a bulb here. So in the, the upper left hand corner of this manometer, you have a gas that's trapped in this bulb. And obviously that gas is going to have some pressure that it exerts, right? The other side of the manometer is actually open to the atmosphere. So the other side of the manometer is um, at atmospheric pressure, whatever the pressure is of your, of your room or where you're doing the experiment, it's going to be at your atmospheric pressure. So this first one that you see is the example of if the pressure of the gas is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere. This liquid that's in the manometer is usually mercury. And if the pressures are both the same, then the heights of the mercury um, on both sides of the manometer will be exactly the same because it's experiencing the exact same pressure on both sides, right? The gas is uh, exerting an atmospheric pressure and the atmospheric pressure is, is equal to that, uh, that same force being exerted per unit area. Now, what we can do with the manometer is if, is we can track the difference in this height, right? So if they're equal, their height will be exactly the same. But if they're different, right? So let's say that the pressure that the gas is exerting is greater than the atmospheric pressure. Well, it's gonna push that mercury a little bit further down the manometer tube, right? So you'll notice a difference between the height on the, the gas's side and the height on the atmosphere's side, right? So then you just add that, those, um, that difference in the height to the pressure of the atmosphere to get the pressure of the gas. Same thing if the gas is exerting less pressure than atmospheric pressure. So if you have the gas exerting less pressure, then the atmosphere is gonna push down a little bit further than this, uh, than this gas sample will, right? Same thing, you get the difference in the height here, and that's going to give you the pressure of the gas if you subtract that from the atmospheric pressure, right? So uh, this gives rise to a unit of pressure that's very weird and specific to this experiment. So there's a, a, a pressure for, um, for gases called millimeters of mercury. And so you'll see this unit written out as MMHG, where HG is your uh, chemical symbol for mercury. Uh, millimeters of mercury is just talking about that difference in the height from a manometer, right? So millimeters of mercury is a unit of pressure, right? Uh, and to flesh out the other units of pressure, we'll kind of use this as a reference. So, um, so one of the standards for pressure units is the standard atmosphere. This is roughly the pressure of the atmosphere. And one standard atmosphere, which we use the abbreviation ATM for, um, is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. Right, I'm going to delete uh, or erase this manometer thing so I have a little bit more room to write. So, um, so one atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury. Um, this millimeters of mercury unit, very old, uh, not really used much anymore because these manometers aren't really in style much. So, um, so we also use the unit of tor. So one atmosphere is also 760 tor. And this is named after an Italian scientist, uh, Evangelista Torsolini, uh, who was actually one of Galileo's students back in the day. Um, this is named after him, right? So one atmosphere is 760 tor and 760 millimeters of mercury. Now, you might be wondering, okay, these units are, you know, kind of seem rather arbitrary and at least on their face don't seem to have any relationship to this definition of pressure. Right? If, if you've been paying attention to units in physics and chemistry anywhere, right? usually the units have some sort of uh, relationship to the definition. Think about volume, for example. Right, uh, The volume of a cube is length times width times height. So it should come as no surprise that units of volume are some sort of length cubed, right? centimeters cubed, meters cubed. That's because of the definition of volume. So same thing here, right? Pressure is force per unit area, so there should be some unit that reflects that um, this definition, right? If we think about force, force is an energy, right? So force is, is, is an energy, and we know that area is some sort of length squared, right? So one of the units that we also have here um, in order to define pressure is newtons per meter squared. 
where newtons is a, um, a unit of force and meters squared is obviously a unit of area, right? So this, this standard atmosphere, this one ATM, is also equal to, if we use this base unit from the definition, 101,325 pascals, right? So if you, if you imagine this, this is atmospheric pressure, right? This is a huge unit. So pascals is barely used uh, when we're talking about units of pressure. Um, mostly people usually use kilopascals, right? Um, just to try to make this number a little bit smaller. Um, but this is, oh, right, I should say first, pascals is the same as Newton per meter squared, right? So Newtons per meter squared is pascals, right? So same thing here. So you have 101,325 Newtons per meter squared, right? We call this Newton per meter squared pascals. And most of the time we use kilopascals rather than pascals since this number is so large for relatively, you know, standard pressure, right? Okay, so these are the units of pressure that you should be familiar with. For the most part, um, in a lot of these calculations, you're going to either be using ATM, you're going to be using TOR, um, or you're going to be using uh, kilopascals, right? So in relation to pascals. So let's go through a really simple problem just to kind of get comfy with these units. Right, so this problem says the pressure of a gas is measured to be 123 torr. Represent this pressure in both atmospheres and pascals. Right, so we, we have 123 torr, right, and we want to represent this in both atmospheres, ATM, and pascals. So what we're going to have to do is put these conversion factors to work. Right, we know that our pressure was given in torr, and we want to make two conversions here. So let's start with the pressure that we were given, right? 123 torr. If we want to convert to atmospheres, to ATM, then we want to use that conversion factor that in one ATM, there's 760 torr, right? So for one atmosphere, we have 760 torr. And so when you do the math there, you get 0.162 ATM. Right, so that gives you your pressure in ATM. Now, we, now that we have this pressure in ATM, we can also convert to pascals. Right, so we know that one ATM is 101,325 pascals. So we can use that conversion factor here to convert that guy to pascals. So 162 ATM times for every one ATM. You have 101,325 pascals, right? So that would give you 16,398 pascals, right? So that effectively converts that pressure from TOR to ATM and to pascals. Okay, so hopefully this video was a, a good introduction to pressure. You may have already been familiar with some of this stuff from general physics, but this gives us a good grounding in pressure. And so now uh, we can kind of discuss how we can use pressure to model the properties of a gas.